Blue Underground continues their ongoing mission, more than a five-year mission, their ongoing mission of releasing wild and wonderful cult films from around the world in past decades with this new 4K upgrade edition. It's a 4K and it's a Blu-ray. It's two separate, oh, I'll show you. It's, it's if you don't, uh, we'll get into that. Jess Franco's Night of the Blood Monster, which is a terrible US retitling of a film known elsewhere as The Bloody Judge, which makes way more sense as to what this film's actually about, which I will get into right now. So this is from 1970, released in 1970, released in the US, I guess, a bit later. I think 72 is when it hit the US through AIP, who turned it into Night of the Blood Monster. It was PG. So I'm gonna tell you about this movie, and if you know this film, uh, when I saw that this was originally rated PG, it was like, wow. You could get away with a lot more in a PG in those days, but they're also, especially in the case of this film, multiple international edits with different kinds of content in it. So this film stars uh, Christopher Lee as the titular uh, bloody judge or blood monster. Uh, Howard Vernon, if you don't know Howard Vernon, but you do know Jess Franco, then you do know Howard Vernon. Howard Vernon was a guy who was just in the majority of Jess Franco films. Very unique looking guy and uh, always a presence. Always, It always makes me laugh. It's like seeing Vic Diaz in a Philippine film. It's just like, that's sort of like part of the deal, right? Like it's it's like if you if you hire Hume Cronin, you get a break on Jessica Tandy or, or vice versa. I don't know how that used to work. Uh, or uh, Ossie Davis and Ruby Dee. They, they kind of kind of went together like shoop do waddy waddy Howard Vernon and Jess Franco. So... Also starring uh, Maria Rome and Diana Laurie, who I immediately recognized and I had to look it up. And she was in a wonderful Euro vampire film of the uh, mid-60s called Malenka, or uh, Fangs of the Living Dead, I think it might have also been called, uh, here, there, and everywhere. Anyway, some familiar faces in this. Uh, really high production quality for a Jess Franco film. I'm not a fan of Jess Franco movies. So I kind of say this about Fulci too. Overall, I'm not a fan, but as I'm getting these nice new releases, I'm give, using this opportunity to take another stab at these things to try to give it another another look. Maybe the versions I saw before were poor quality. Maybe the versions I saw before were incomplete. Maybe I just wasn't in the right mindset. So uh, as these companies are putting out these Franco films, Blue Underground being one of them, I, and I think Severn might have put out a couple, uh, I'm like, sure, yeah, I'll, I'll review that. We'll, we'll see what I think now. I actually like this. So... Uh, many minutes into this review, you're like, you're going to tell me what this film is about? Okay, yeah, I will tell you what this film's about. This film is about, uh, I was going to say 90 minutes long. It's not a very long film. This film is about uh, 103 minutes long. So what this is on this disc is the longest possible version. They say in the extras, this is like the integral version where this isn't necessarily a version that was seen in theaters. This is sort of all of the most extreme bits from all of the cuts put in. So this is the cut that has all the nudity. This is the cut that has all the violence. There are actually deleted scenes on this film that are scene extensions and things like that, but we'll get to that later. And the basic idea of this film, I'm going to tell you now, the basic idea of this film is uh, Christopher Lee is this judge that rules with an iron fist. It opens up and it says it's uh, 1685 in England, and he's trying to root out traitors and people who aren't loyal to the king and witches witches and and people who are bewitching people and doing demonic things so if you've seen Witchfinder general and if you've seen mark of the devil mark of the devil 2 this is almost like a combination of those two movies it's not as extreme as mark of the devil got mark of the devil got really grimy and gr gruesome and gritty this does it in in little spots but not really that bad and uh, christopher lee is really in it in it throughout he is at the core of this film you have christopher lee who is uh you know accusing people of witchcraft and there's a young lady he accuses of this and, and her her young lover is trying to rescue her and get her out of prison and save her from being burned at the stake as we saw somebody else or burned on a ladder dipped into a fire that was done earlier in the film and it's just it's good versus evil and uh evil is, seems to be running things so that's that's the overall idea of this film uh presented on uh, two discs you have the 4k uhd disc which looks gorgeous it looks really good and razor sharp that disc probably due to the extras on it maybe not all being in 4k and also to give it you know devote more bit rate to the disc and more space on the disc for just, you know, the movie, which is what you're watching it in 4K for. It's just the film with uh, three commentaries, which I'll tell you about in a second. The rest of the extras are on the Blu-ray disc. Otherwise, the Blu-ray is identical. Same menu, same same everything, same transfer, just not in 4K, just a regular 1080p. But uh, so it's if you don't have a 4K player and you buy this, 
you get all the goodies, the new extras, the new transfer and all that. And you get a 4K disc that maybe you can play someday if you get a 4K player. If you do have a 4K player, you have to pop the other Blu-ray disc in to watch the extras. It's a, it's, it's a win-win no matter how you do it. Uh, I neglected to mention uh, music by Bruno Nicolai, who is one of the greats of uh, Italian uh, film scores of like the 60s and 70s. And the Blu-ray disc, the extras, so the subtitles, you have English SDH subtitles for the for the deaf and hard of hearing. You get French subtitles and you get Spanish subtitles. It is, uh, as I said, 103 minutes. It was originally 84 minutes in the U.S. So think, look at those running times. It was like 20 minutes shorter in the U.S. And what was lost was the more extreme violence and the more extreme nudity and, and all that stuff, the more perverse elements of the film. And for Franco, that's... You know, this is actually very mild for what Jess Franco would go on to do later. So the U.S. version was rated PG. It was run as a double feature with uh, the hammer blood from the mummy's tomb. And uh, it was, you know, put into drive-ins and, and things like that back then. Uh, there are uh, apparently many different edits of this film with like alternate takes and alternate scenes and some uh, extensions of scenes, as I said. So you're seeing a representation of this film. And then, as I said, in the extras, you get to see the extras. I'm just kind of going through my notes here. Uh, it's it's kind of light on violence and blood overall, not as much as Mark of the Devil or even Witchfinder General would be. Some of those movies that really exploited, they really lived up to their exploitation title. This is a little a little laid back on that. And as I said, for a Jess Franco movie, I think of the stuff he made kind of a bit later that was really technically not terribly well made, made kind of on the cheap, didn't always weren't always terribly well shot or, or acted. This is well shot. Uh, they shot in a lot of actual locations that gave it tremendous production value, old castles and mansions and things like this. Lots of costumes. Like, it was really surprising. At first, I was like, is this just stock footage from another film? Because you've got people in all kinds of period dress and armies fighting each other. Small armies. Armies of maybe a dozen or so. But still, for a Jess Franco movie, this is pretty impressive. So if you only know his later stuff, this one is worth is worth looking at. Um, the, uh, let's see... Sorry, sometimes it's hard to read my own notes. So the extras, audio commentary, three commentaries here. Audio commentary with film historians Troy Howarth and Nathaniel Thompson, who are always great. Audio commentary with film historians Kim Newman and Barry Forshaw, who are always great. And audio commentary with film historians uh, David Flint and Adrian Smith, who I don't know, but they were really good too. So three solid commentaries that really don't duplicate each other. And that's impressive because sometimes when you get these discs that have tons of extras, if you're like me and you want to go through all of it, even if you don't want to go through all of it, I go through all of it so I can talk about it here. Sometimes you get tired of hearing the same stories over and over again. You're like, okay, um, this is the eighth time I've heard that anecdote. It was not fresh anymore. But and I like that sometimes they seem to at least try to take a different approach in what they're talking about or even be aware of what the other people have talked about and not duplicate it. There might be a couple things that are mentioned more than once on this, but really, really not much. Then you have featurettes. Now, what's on this disc is are a combination of things that are newly produced for this edition and things that maybe were on a previous Blue Underground edition, because a lot of these Blue Underground Blu-rays and 4Ks are films that Bill Lustig and Blue Underground have had license to for a while, and they put it out on DVD, then they put it out on Blu-ray, and now they're getting around to putting things out on 4K and, and adding new supplements. So, set feature, it's Bloody Jess, interviews with director Jess Franco and star Christopher Lee, that's 25 minutes, that's from the 2003 DVD. Judgment Day, interview with Stephen Thrower, author of Murderous Passions, The Delirious Cinema of Jess Franco. That's 33 minutes, and that's new. In the Shadows, interview with filmmaker Alan Berkshaw and author Stephen Thrower on Harry Allen Towers, who was the producer of, of this and a lot of Jess Franco films. And boy, are there stories about Harry Allen Towers. There are stories, they allude to them in the commentaries, and I'm like, well, I'm not sure we can talk about that. This extra talks about that, and it's it's pretty amusing and interesting. And even then, you feel like maybe they're holding back a little bit. That is from the, it's 24 minutes, it's from the 2023 88 Films release. So 88 Films in the UK put this out on Blu-ray, and I love this. So it's, it's not one of those situations where a new edition comes out here and it's really great, but oh, the edition overseas has a couple extras that I really want, so now I gotta buy both. If you're a completist or a huge fan of these films, it's nice when they pour them over and you can just, on domestically get them all in one place. There are deleted and alternate scenes, uh, which all open, which I love, with title screens that explain where they originally went in the film or what film, what version of the film they came from. Like sometimes they'll say, this was only in the Italian version. Or, or in the case of this version here, this film, that the main feature here, this integral cut, the extras will say, 
This is the scene as it appeared in most versions of the film. So the version that we're seeing on this disc in 4K is uh, is not necessarily how people originally saw it in the U.S. or some other country. So that, I thought that was very helpful, and I like that. It sets a little context for uh, for what these things are that you're about to see. Uh, the the quality is lower. Like maybe they were done in the DVD era, or they were done on another. I mean, they're all widescreen. They'll look okay, but sometimes the frame rate is a little weird, and they just don't look as sharp as the rest of the content on this disc. So the, I'll, I'll run through these for you quick. There's a deleted, deleted scene, Mary's grief, six minutes. Alternate clothed love scene, that's a minute. So they would shoot things more than once, knowing that some countries kind of wanted or required a little bit more skin, a little bit more violence. Apparently the German market was very bloodthirsty. And uh, European, you know, at the time this was came out in 1970, it was changing here as far as what you could get away with and nudity and things in movies. But even earlier than that, even the mid sixties or earlier, they would, sh they would have unclothed or hot versions or cool versions as they would call them. So you get the same scene that you just saw in the version of the film that's on this disc with full of nudity. You see the same scene played out with people clothed, which is just kind of interesting. You get alternate Jeffrey's nightmare, which was a, a scene where a lot of torture is being shown. And in this version, they use superimpositions to sort of tone down how, explicit it felt on screen. That's one minute. Alternate Mary's release from the dungeon, similar, minute and a half. Alternate Bloody Judge main titles, which is how it played in a lot of countries. So it's the opening titles with that Bloody Judge title. That is two minutes. Alternate Der Hexentoter von Blackmore main titles. That's two minutes. That's how the German version of the film. And those are almost totally different main titles, which are interesting. And then you get the alternate ending from the German version, which kind of rearranges some things to give uh, the villain of the film, actually more of the kind of ending you want him to have than in the main version here. The ending of, of this film, I'm not going to say anything, but the ultimate fate of the villain in the film, in the integral cut, is just like, ah, boy, he was such a bastard through the whole film and did such terrible things to people or had had such terrible things done to people, you really wished his comeuppance was greater. The German version gives you that satisfaction. Trailers and a TV spot, these are all from the US release. We have a US AIP trailer that's a minute, which is the uh, Night of the Blood Monster title. You get the US Combination trailer, which is when it was put out as a double feature with Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. That's two minutes, and it's basically split down the middle. It's like a minute for each film, and then at the end, I think they have the title card that has both on it. Then you have the US Combo TV spot, which is just a 30 second TV spot for that double feature as it was originally released. Still galleries, a whole bunch of stuff here. You got 12 poster images, eight advertising materials, images, 31 lobby cards, which I think is split between the US and the German, maybe there's one other, uh, black and white stills, 156. A lot of stills, and it's not just like scenes from the movie, it's behind the scenes and people uh, out of character on the set and people you know out like in the community, or it's, it's, it's more interesting than your average black and white still selection is. 58 color stills, 14 images of video releases in the soundtrack. Most of those are newer. I, when I see the video images, I'm always like more interested in the old original releases, the old Laserdisc, the old VHS, the old eight millimeter or 16 millimeter or whatever. These are all from the more modern DVD and Blu-ray era, but it's still interesting to see how it's marketed in different places. One of which using um, Christopher Lee, a photo of Christopher Lee, like in modern dress from probably the late seventies, which totally is not how he looks in this film. And uh, so yeah, that's that's what I've got. The 4K disc, as I said, is the same, uh, the same transfer obviously, and the same uh, kind of you, you'd think I would know the word audio commentary, but no. The same audio commentaries and all that, but all the, the extras are on this SD, the uh, regular HD Blu-ray. So, packaging. Really cool cover. I really like this very salacious, not really representational of the film very much, but at the same time, that's exploitation. And then the back gives you all the info, and that is a slip case, which slips off to reveal same image, and same image on the back, and then we open it up, and we have uh, two different artworks, one for the Blu-ray edition of the film and one for the 4K. And then lovingly rendered, we have, that's the way it comes, but it's a reversible cover with uh, the Bloody Judge artwork, which is cool, which is, uh, yeah, it looks like it's based maybe on an Italian poster. So at any rate, available now on 4K HDR, U, is it HDR? 4K UHD disc plus a Blu-ray, from Blue Underground is Jess Franco's 1970 Night of the Blood Monster, a.k.a. the Bloody Judge.